What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ricky Gadsden, 11 time drag racing world champion. And today we're in search of some more horsepower out of our 2020 ZX10R. Now, I made a call out to More Mafia because they claim they, get, they got the fastest 1000 in the world, stock 1000 in the world. And it's not that I didn't respect the fact that he have already accomplished and went out and proven that he's gone fast. But I just feel like no one's taken that serious with a ZX-10. No one's tried to make a ZX-10R um, or put in the effort with a ZX-10R that he's put in with the 2020 GS6R. So today, to start this out, we're going back on the dyno looking for more power every way we can find it. So we'll stand by as we search high and low for some more horsepower because the first thing you got to do is have horsepower. Now, one thing I want to mention is Dy all dynos are different. Chris Moore's dyno reads one thing, my dyno reads something else. Mine is very a very low reading dyno. So I'm not worried about that part. I'm worried about the gains that I get when I make changes, but I still want to see some good numbers. Is the stock exhaust just as good as an aftermarket exhaust on a Kawasaki ZX-10R? All the ZX-10s come with titanium head section on a stock exhaust. Now, to get full power, you gotta get rid of the catalytic converter. So you can do a cat delete system, uh, which we've done, and we, we're running the Predator system that Brock, that Brock makes. And uh, we're gonna dyno tune that first and then go head to head with a full titanium, full titanium $2,500 uh, Acropovic exhaust. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Let's go and let's go get busy. So just like that guys, it's done. We got a full system on the bike. Just that fast through the magic of time lapse. We just put a slip on on. We got rid of that catalytic converter and all. So this is basically a cat delete system. So let's just see what we get just by changing that. We just dynoed it a few minutes ago, made 182 horsepower. 15 minutes later, we're about to dyno it again, see what it get. we get just with the exhaust change. pretty nice gain just from going from the standard the stock exhaust to a slip on so the predator looks like it makes about eight horsepower more seven horsepower more well actually in this area it's making eight horsepower more um, Wow and it's throughout the whole rev range so that's a pretty nice gain and as you can see this is a slip on because all slip ones do this in this area they have this dip right here but even with the, even with the uh, torque, torque's got four foot pounds of torque there. Um, it's a nice game. Let me switch this over to RPM, engine speed. Uh, remember, that is only, you figure that is what? From 
417 to 446, so 30, 29 minutes later. So you can pick up eight horsepower, so it's a pretty good game. So the Predator ended up making seven to eight horsepower more than the stock exhaust did, which, which of course we expected that. But you know, no one runs pump gas anymore. That's all stock stuff with pump gas and everything, but all of us drag racers, everybody runs race gas now. We throw MR12 in, and that's when we see what it's really got. So what I did was, I forgot to show you where I basically ran the bike to get a baseline on a different day, completely different day, ran the bike to get a baseline on it, and I think it made 187 horsepower, and check out what it made with MR12. Now, this is the Predator exhaust. It's still the slip-on. Check out what it made. On the day that I did this test, um, it made 187 horsepower, and that was on pump gas. And then we put the MR12 in, and I adjusted the ignition timing, and I did a lot of fuel changes and everything. But look at that. Look at what it did with adding the MR12. And this is what I'm talking about. We don't use pump gas when we're out there racing. So we put the MR12 in made the necessary tuning adjustments with the ignition timing and everything. And wow, look at that. So that's a big difference, 197 horsepower. So, so now I want to change the exhaust again and see how much more we can find. So we ran out of time last night and uh, I don't want to get kicked out of, out of this uh, neighborhood with my loud dyno. Uh, anyway, so we ran out of time and of course, Today is not going to be a good day for numbers. Um, but anyway, I guess it really doesn't matter. The overall number is not as important as the gains. So we're going to drop, go inside, get a baseline on the uh, Predator, um, drop it, and then put the Akrapovic on first and see what difference the, we get in the full system. Uh, I mean, this is this is a $2,500 full titanium Akrapovic. It, hopefully it makes a big difference. So uh, let's go inside and see. Today sucks for numbers. Just like I thought, it's a much worse day. It's hotter, it's more, way more humid outside. Uh, it's worth four horsepower. So we're starting out with 93 horsepower with the Brox Predator and um, 76, what are we at? 82 foot pounds of torque. So let's drop this exhaust and, and get moving. So I got I got some tuning to do, but we go from uh, 93, 193 to 194 horsepower, 82.5 foot pounds of torque, um, and it does clean up this area down here a lot. It cleans up down low. This is where a lot of the slip ones on the Kawasaki ZX10 suffer at, um, and then up here it makes about one to two horsepower more. So. Uh, not quite what I would expect from a, a, a full titanium full system so let me do some tuning and make some more pulls it's times like this when I really love the flexibility of being able to go in and make the fueling changes I need with my power commander which makes it a lot quicker on my PC5 and also go in use my Woolwich um, and go into ECU and make some changes that I know works on the bike so uh, I'll do both of those and make another shot at it Quick two horsepower gain just by adding fuel through the PC5 and now I'm going to use my Woolly software to go into ECU to make a couple more changes. Absolutely better. I mean, 
that's that's much more like what you would expect from an acropovic. A full titanium, full system acropovic should make that at 200 horsepower. I'm happy with that. 85 foot pounds of torque, um, and it makes a good solid six horsepower more than when we started. So, going in PC5, making some fueling changes, and and going into Woolwich in the ECU and making the changes that I've I've learned that worked in the, that I learned worked in the past. Um, it's paying off. So, uh, good job, Acropovic. So, now it's time to switch yet again because we're never satisfied with the amount of horsepower we have now. We're always looking for more. So now that our install is over, it's time to put her back on the dyno and see what the difference is. Wow, these took completely different fuelings. Uh, the Sidewinder is completely different on the fuel map than the Acropovic is. But that's what we got. We got 200.32 with the Acropovic and 200 with the Brock Sidewinder, which, you know, I never, I was kind of wondering whether the Sidewinder would be too much for a stock motorcycle. Um, if you look at the blue is the Acropovic and the blue kind of trumps it down here, um, kind of carries a couple more horsepower, three more horsepower there, that's uh, 8,000 RPMs, carries a couple more, one more horsepower there, two more horsepower there, so after 10, five, after 11,000 RPM, they are identical, all the way up through the, through the uh, overrun, so, uh, you yeah, know, um, you got a full titanium system up against a stainless Sidewinder. And the Sidewinder wasn't, Brock Sidewinder wasn't made for the new 2020s. Uh, that's the same Sidewinder from the Gen 4. So I'm surprised that it even did this good up against a $2,500 full titanium um, Acropovic. So uh, I got one more thing I want to try and then that'll be it for our pipe test. So, I definitely didn't expect this. So, look at that. This is the Acropovic 106. This is the Acropovic 200.32. And the Brock Sidewinder without the baffle. Like, you could have never told me that pulling the baffle out of a stock 1,000cc motorcycle would pick up horsepower. But it absolutely did. Um... Again, down down low, the Acropovic has more back pressure, so of course it makes more down low. But if you look here, from the red is Brock's Sidewinder without the baffle. If you look here from 10,000 RPMs on, it starts separating. One horsepower there, one horsepower there, uh, two horsepower up there. Like basic, well, it's one and a half horsepower basically. Um, I'm just shocked, uh, two horsepower in the overrun. So there you have it, folks. Brock Sidewinder without the baffle on a 2020 ZX-10R just beat one in all of the three that I just tested, which was the Predator slip-on, the Sidewinder, I mean the uh, Acropovic, and now the Sidewinder. And with the baffle in it, 
the Acropovic, the full titanium Acropovic, is just a just a smidge better. Um, I don't know about for the difference in the price, but the without the baffle, huh, Brock does it again. His drag pipe on a drag ZX-10R is the best application for me to get to Chris Moore's ass. Ha ha ha!